Well, it's been quite a week, quite a month, quite a year. It's five months ago since, uh, sorry, five months, yeah, indeed, since John Steenhuisen, the DA leader, leader of the opposition, uh, spoke with us here on Biz News. Time for a catch up. Lots has happened. I look forward to the next 20 minutes or so. Yeah, it's a busy old time, I guess, as we go forward towards the election next year. John, are you you're doing a bit of traveling, I believe? Yeah, well, I mean, I, apart from going around the country, I've also just come back from an international conference on rolling back authoritarianism in Poland, um, held right next door to Ukraine, uh, with some counterparts, uh, opposition parties and, and leaders from uh, Eastern Europe, from uh, South America, and also from Africa, which was very, very interesting to see uh, some of those countries making progress, some going backwards, but also some horror stories of what would await us if we were to go down some of the policy paths that parties like the EFF uh, and others uh, went down. Quite interesting speaking to Leopoldo Lopez, who was the leader of the opposition in Venezuela, who ended up on the wrong side of the Maduro regime and ended up being jailed for seven years and is now living in exile, trying to bring democracy to, to Venezuela. And again, it just reignited that there's a lot to fight for in South Africa, and uh, the cost of uh, of freedom is eternal vigilance. Indeed it is. I have a look as a rational person at the actions of the ANC, both on the economy and in the international arena, which are very well documented as being really poor, many own goals, shooting both feet off at the same time. And you'd think that it's obvious that in 2024, the ANC would lose power. Yet today, I was reading a report from the Eurasia Group, Ian Bremer's uh, business, which is one of the biggest political consultancies in the world. And they put a 60% chance on the ANC getting more than 50% of the vote again in the 2024 election. Now, are these guys dreaming or are you on the opposition benches just not getting your act together? Well, I'd very much like to see what methodology they're using. We run the most sophisticated uh, poll in the continent, and we're polling continuously. Um, and a number of very interesting things have happened recently in that polling. First of all, the ANC's hit lows as low as 31 and 32 percent, um, and have not polled above 50 percent for the last eight to nine months. So it'd be very interesting to see what methodology they're using to. Uh, base it on, but my understanding is that being a political analyst means never having to say you're sorry. And it'll be interesting to see some of the previous predictions they've made around elections, etc. I would just say this, though, and I, I don't think it takes a, a pepsologist to, to determine that the ANC is in deep, deep trouble. Their own polling is showing it. Certainly polls here in South Africa show it. Um, and as load shedding and other policy failures start to bite, I think the situation is going to get worse rather than better. And today's jobs numbers that came out showed that there was another jobs bloodbath in quarter one twenty three, And unemployment and the economy and energy are going to be the big issues that dominate the coming election. And the ANC is on the back foot on every single one of those metrics. Everything they've touched, from the railways to the harbours to the economy to education to healthcare, um, they have fundamentally broken. And I do not see a path to victory for them uh, with their own majority after the 2024 election. These guys, though, are respected internationally. And they put it on, they give three bases. And I'd love you to address each one of those, given that this is the message that the international community is getting. And as a consequence, you can imagine acting on whether it's not investing in South Africa because of their concerns about the ANC or indeed cozying up to the uh, to that political party. First one is the point they make is that the opposition is highly fragmented. 300 registered parties, 48 parties that contested the last general election, 14 currently represented in parliament. And the moonshot pact, your moonshot pact, according to them, is unlikely to hold. Well, I mean, I would say that, again, I'd love to know what their methodology is. They haven't been sitting in the meetings that we've been having, which have been very constructive and are, are working towards it. Yes, South African politics is highly fragmented, but it's no different to many other democracies around the world. I mean, some of the ballot papers I've seen 
at elections I've observed in Africa and other parts of the world have far more parties than that on on the ballot paper, uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of political parties. So I don't think that is the problem. Um, I think the problem is that the opposition has not been united as it should have been. Um, and that's precisely what the Moonshot Pact is attempting to do with a 15-month runway ahead of the election for parties to be able to come together around a common set of values and principles and a program of action and to focus on those things that unite us that need to be done to fix South Africa rather than focusing on the things that divide us. So, I mean, we've been in this road before. I mean, these are the same people who said the DA would probably get 14% in the last election and there was no hope. Um, and I think that what we've been able to do through the Moonshot Pact is to paint very, very clearly a pathway to victory, a credible path to victory. The non-ANC EFF aligned opposition got around 35% of the vote in the last election. That's just 15 points shy of the majority, uh, the magic number that you need to cross. Put in the mix the 14 million people who did not vote in the last two elections, plus the 13 plus million people who are not even registered to vote. There's a lot to play for. I believe that party opposition parties can grow in this environment and we can make good that 15% um, through getting people back involved in the political spe uh, sphere and making the case to particularly those 13 million people who aren't registered that you may not be interested in politics, but it is fundamentally interested in you. And if you can reach into your home, your business, your hustle and switch off your lights, you can bet your bottom dollar that it's coming for your water it's coming for your sanitation, your roads, your children's education, and your health care pretty soon. And you need to be part of the solution. And I think there's a compelling change message that we can set out very clearly going into this if the opposition is able to unite. And I would say the Moonshot Pact is no by no means guarantee, but I believe it is incumbent on us to do everything we can to put aside petty differences and focus on the fundamental things that unite us rather than those things that divide us and be able to put a compelling offer, an alternative, and I say that very clearly, an alternative before the people of South Africa uh, at the next election. It's just such an interesting conversation that Herman Mashaba had with us only last week where he said the big problem here is that it looks like the DA is lining up to be the coalition partner with the ANC in the next election. Now, last time we spoke, and also with your federal chair, Helen Ziller, the point was made that it is the second worst option. The worst option would be an ANC-EFF alliance, but uh, the DA-ANC would be the second worst option. Surely it's time now, and I remember when we spoke about this, you said it, it, something would happen at the April conference, uh, DA conference, where you were re-elected, but... Surely it's time now, as Herman says, for the opposition parties to say, we will not go in under any circumstances into coalition with the ANC and then to fight together. Even if you lose, well, at least uh, the people who voted for you knew that knew what they were voting for. Or does that not happen in politics? Do you guys just change your mind when the, when the votes have been counted? No, Alec, let me be very clear, and I was abundantly clear in the speech that I made after our Congress, and I invite anyone watching to go back and read that. It's widely available. I said very clearly, for the next 15 months, we're going to work as hard as we can to unite the opposition to be able to bring together a solid block that will be able to challenge the ANC for power. Primary goal is to get the ANC out of power and by working with opposition parties that share a common set of values and principles, a common program of action, and who want an alternative for the country. But, and I was very clear on that caveat, that the disastrous, the doomsday scenario for South Africa is an ANC EFF tie up. And having spent time with people and who've lived in countries under authoritarian regimes that have rolled out the same Chavez Marxist policies, and to hear firsthand the stories of suffering, oppression, hunger, joblessness, and mass human displacement, we have to avoid that at all costs. So politics is about options. It's about making sure that you've got options available to prevent South Africa sliding towards a failed state. So my goal for the next 15 months is not to do a deal with the ANC. And I really wish Herman would focus on actually you know, the things that are bringing us together rather than 
continuously carping at the things that he perceives are dividing us. I have no interest in working with the ANC. I've made it very clear that I want to work with opposition parties to be able to put together a compelling alternative for South Africa. That is the first prize. But I will also do everything in my power. And I think our voters would expect it. I think the economy would expect it from us. And I think anyone who looks at politics maturely would expect from us to make sure that the EFF do not get into the union buildings, either through the front door or through the back door. And we must prevent that at all costs. Because I want to say to you, Alec, if that scenario happens overnight, there will be mass disinvestment in the economy. Uh, people who were holding out to see what happens at election will give up on South Africa. There will be capital flight, the likes of which we've never seen before, and skills flight. I'm not being, I'm not being a, a scaremonger here, because these are exactly what happened in places like Venezuela, in places like Cuba, in places like Zimbabwe, where these policies were applied and where those parties that were so aligned got into power. So my message to Herman and to all the other leaders is, we, if we want to prevent us having to work with the ANC, well, let's join hands, stand shoulder to shoulder, and go out there and make a compelling case to the citizens of South Africa and show them that we can work together. And I think that's a far more constructive way for us to proceed down this road. Yeah, the inability of the opposition parties to work together has been highlighted uh, continuously. The big concern or the elephant in the room is the patriotic alliance and the the competition that they believe they're giving you, and we're seeing it in the by-elections, in particularly the Cape province, and that this makes it very difficult for the two of you to work together. Are you making any progress of finding a, a as you said, more that you have in common than what divides you? Well, let me just deal with the first point that you made, because I think it is an important point that needs to be made, and one that's often missed. There's a myopia that sets in around opposition parties working together when they look through the only lens of Johannesburg. And yes, that is problematic because it is fractured. But my party is involved in over 25 coalitions in different parts of the country. These coalitions with other opposition parties are stable. They bring good, clean, accountable government to places like Richards Bay, Swellendam, George, Cape Gullis, Cedarburg Municipality, and other parts of the country. We're involved in 13 of them in KwaZulu-Natal with the Encarta Freedom Party. Now, they don't make the headlines because they are stable, they work well, and they are functional, and they achieve the result that they were set out to do. So I think people must be very careful about writing off coalitions or seeing coalitions only through the myopic lens of Johannesburg or Gauteng, because it is possible for opposition parties to work together, and we're demonstrating that uh, across, across the country. The second thing about the PA is, let me make it clear, and I, I was very clear earlier, that we have to provide an alternative to the ANC in the next election. We cannot do what the DA did in 2016 when we got into bed with the EFF in Johannesburg, succumb and become essentially what you said you were going to replace, which was a kleptocratic regime focused on tenders and contracts, uh, cater deployment, and making sure that uh, certain jobs were reserved for certain individuals within the party. And we found that very clearly that very soon after we got into power there, the EFF came knocking with those demands. This person to be the city manager, this person to be a the vanilla fleet contract to be given to person X, Y, and Z. That's not an alternative. That's becoming the same as the government that you replaced. Now, I have fundamental concerns about the PA, and I have put my differences aside with them on four different occasions. And on four different occasions, they have reneged on their side of the bargain and have worked against us, gone against us, turfed out opposition governments, to put the ANC in charge. Johannesburg, Neisner, Cedarburg, many other places around the country. Now, Maya Angelou was very, very clear when she said, when somebody shows you who they are the first time, you should believe them. And there's another saying, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. 
And the behavior of the PA uh, particularly, I think, has been unhelpful, and they have caused a loss of confidence in themselves as being a viable coalition partner. Now, as you will no doubt know, I, through Dr. Mulder, brokered a meeting with Gate and McKenzie at Dr. Mulder's house a few months ago, where I wanted to sit with Gate and McKenzie off the books and have a frank discussion about the way forward. What did Gayton do? He left that meeting, despite the agreement that it was going to be kept for that time under wraps, and went and told the newspapers that we had agreed to make him the mayor of Johannesburg, when nothing of the sort had even been decided. I regard that as a massive show of bad faith, and I think it is very, very difficult to sit around a fire with somebody who, in the face of efforts to try and work together, they've shown you that they're intent on doing the opposite. The most recent was in Nelson Mandela Bay. Yes, there may well be a competition in the Western Cape. I think they're going to pick up a lot of the good and CCC votes that were going around there, certainly if I look at the trends, and they may well be a force around the country. But here's the thing, Alec. You can't get into bed with people who are going to force you into being another version of that which you seek to replace. And when I see the stories coming out of Beaufort West, I see the concerns raised by Ratings Africa. I see the concerns around the Auditor General about bank accounts that were opened, donations that were ostensibly supposed to go to Beaufort West and ended up in somebody else's account, seeing the broken promises there, and seeing the cadre deployment that's now happening in Johannesburg. Uh, that switches me off and I think would switch a number of voters off. I don't want to get into government and then not be able to govern according to the values and principles that are going to be required to really change things. So Gayton's got a lot of work to do to convince certainly me and many of the other opposition leaders whose fingers he has burnt that he is indeed somebody who we can sit around the campfire with in a trusting environment and in a way that's going to be able to constructively build a relationship that will go the distance and not a fair weather arrangement where when something better comes along, you know, you, you move along. So what does Gayton McKenzie have to do to get back into the uh, Moonshot Pact? Well, he would certainly have to avow his working relationship with the ANC. He's actively working with the ANC in Johannesburg, in Nelson Mandela Bay, in a variety of other municipalities, Nisner, etc., against the opposition. Now, you can't be dancing with me in the Moonshot and stabbing me in the back at the same time uh, in Johannesburg, Nelson Mandela Bay, and other places. You can't be fish and fowl. You must make a choice now. Are you going to go into this election working with the ANC or are you going to show some good faith and work with the opposition? If so, dump the ANC and make a proper effort to build stable coalitions with government. That would be a massive show of good faith. Secondly, deal with these allegations that are now surrounding Beaufort West because they strike at the very heart of the model of good governance and accountability and a government that is responsive to people's needs and not the needs of politicians. And frankly, the stuff around Beaufort West stinks to high heavens and it needs to be cleared up because it is going to be a cloud above the PA and Mr. McKenzie's head, certainly uh, as long as it remains unclarified. Just again, uh, and maybe just to close off with it, the, the rational mind looks at South Africa and they, they see the track record of the ANC and they see the track record of your party, of the DA, in the Western Cape, which runs well. It's like a different country in the Western Cape. And I know that having lived in Gauteng for so long and now having relocated to the Western Cape. In a, in a rational world, it would be a no contest. But why isn't it? Well, because of our history and the past, and also because I don't think in the past there's been a path to victory for the opposition. Every election since 1994 has been a foregone conclusion. I think this next election is going to be the first in 75 years where no party is going to emerge with the majority, and certainly the first post-democracy where the ANC is not guaranteed an outside win. And I think that many voters in the past have said, well, my vote doesn't count. It doesn't matter. The ANC is going to win anyway and have stayed at home. I think that by being able to put on the table a compelling alternative offer to South Africa, 
one that can get the economy moving, one that can create jobs, one that can fix the broken education system, one that can keep you safe, is a compelling offer and one that can end load shedding. And the great thing here, Alec, is that we've got the proof points to show it. 98% of all net new jobs in the last quarter created in the DA-run Western Cape. Crime down 14% thanks to our devolution model that has put more police on local policing initiatives. GBV and and, uh, sexual crimes down 10%. Our education outcomes are almost double and treble that of the national government. We've got a functioning public transport system. Everyone has a hospital or health facility within five kilometers of them. We're equipping our economy to grow. We're investing in infrastructure. These are the things that we want to do at a national level now, and that is why it is fundamentally important that people support the DA so that we can be the anchor of a new majority in South Africa that can bring those things to the other provinces around the country. And that's certainly going to be the mission over the next 15 months, to make that compelling offer to South Africans that complaining about the situation, uh, sitting bemoaning load shedding, the high crime rate, is not going to solve things. Change does not happen by osmosis. It happens through an active act of the will of voters to come out and vote and vote for that change. And that's the message we'll be taking out to citizens across the country. We've always believed at Biz News that you should never underestimate the intelligence of the common man, but never overestimate their knowledge. And I think from what you've told us now, the challenge for the DA is to get that knowledge or to share the knowledge of of a very, very real template which exists in the Western Cape that it can happen elsewhere in the country. John Sienhazen is the leader of the opposition, the leader of the Democratic Alliance, and I'm Alec Hogg from biznews.com.